So hello everyone, can you hear me? And also can you see the screen? Yep. Okay, good. Uh, I think today uh, we will spend most of the time talking about the Maxwell's equation. Uh, this is a uh, uh, very hard part in the electromagnetics. And I hope um, to, for you, uh, if you want to uh, get familiar with these equations, um, you have to do many practice on the mastering physics. But I will slow down um, for each of the equation. And if you have any question, you can stop me. So for the Maxwell's equation, I think first of all, we, want, uh, we need to know why we need them. So let me start from the Newton theory. Uh, when we talk about the uh, dynamics, so the, for the Newton theory right here, um, the Newton theory. This is uh, four equations to explain um, the general theory for the dynamics. So let me, uh, remind you, first one, the Newton first law said, if the net force on the object is equal to zero, then the speed of this object doesn't change. Speed is a constant. So that means uh, the motion of the object doesn't change until there is a force to change the motion. So the second one will be uh, the Newton's second law, that is, the net force, if the net force is not zero, then it will be equal to the MA. F equal to MA. F is the net force, A is acceleration, and M is the mass. So that means if the net force on the object is not equal to zero, then there will be an acceleration on that object. Number three is the reactive force and the force. If there is object A, and collide with object B, then the force from A to B is equal to the force from B to A. We call it the reactive force equal to the force. The magnitude is equ equivalent. Let me say A to B equal to the force from B to A, but the um, direction are not the same. The directions are opposite, so we use the negative sign in front of the force. So this is a Newton third law. And the number four is the gravity. And the gravity says if there are two objects, two planets, or two stars, and they will attract each other. The attractive force is called gravitational force. So the force has a relation with the mass of each object, ma and b. And if their distance r, then they should be um, have, uh, let me say, the, the force has a relation of 1 over r squared. Right? This is a theory, and uh, we need a constant to give the equivalent sign. And so these four equations explain all the motions in the dynamics. And the Newton is a guy um, who first summarized all of the theories into um, those four equations. So if we know those four equations, then we can use the four equations to explain and all the motions and in the universe or on the Earth. Then we have a similar question. Do we have a general theory, like Newton theory in the electromagnetics, to explain all the phenomena happened in the uh, electric magnetics. So the question is, do we or can we find general equations in the electric magnetics and to explain all phenomena So this is our motivation. And the answer is yes. 
So more than 100 years ago, or nearly 200 years, there is a Genesis guy, Maxwell. So he summarized all the equations, all the theories from other physicists and summarized four equations to explain the electromagnetics we call it Maxwell's equations. So there are four equations. Actually, the four equations uh, are not uh, discovered by Maxwell. Maxwell just uh, summarized these equations and other people's theory. So the four equations um, are Gauss's law, Friday's law, and Ampere's law, and the last one is uh, um, magnetic flux of a closed surface. Okay, so let's talk about each law one by one and I'm going to derive the equations. Okay. So Gauss's law said, if there is electric field in the space, then we can calculate the electric flux. And the closer surface, if we have a closer surface, any shape, and in the closer surface, there is an object. The object has a charge positive charge, negative charge, uniform distribution, or uniform distribution, whatever, then it will generate electric field through the surface we sketch here. And if we calculate the electric flux over the closer surface, then that will be the integral of electric field times the small area. And this integral is independent to the ge uh, geometry of the surface. It's only dependent to the charge inside the surface. So we have the charge over the epsilon. This is a Gauss's law. So if the, unif uh, the distribution of the electric field is uniform, then we can simplify this equation as electric field times the surface area equal to this one. So this is for the uniform electric field distribution. This is for a uniform, non-uniform, non-uniform electric field distribution. So this is the first equation in the Maxwell's equation group. We are going to do the surface integral of the electric field and the result is only depend uh, on the charge inside the surface. And the charge over the, uh, the constant is uh, flux. And if the, the closed surface doesn't include any charge or the net charge inside the closed surface is equal to zero, then the flux is equal to zero. Okay. This is the first law of the uh, Maxwell's equation. Second law will be the Friday's law. Friday's law is equal, uh, it's also called by the electromagnetic induction, right? If there is a change of electric, uh, if there is a change of magnetic flux, then in the space, it will generate um, an electric potential difference or the current. So suppose we have the surface, it's the surface, and inside the surface, there is magnetic field across, uh, through the surface. And if the flux of magnetic field change the flux of magnetic field change, it will in, induce, it will induce uh, the current or electrical potential. Okay. 
Okay, this is uh, um, Friday's law. And if we write down the formula, that will be um, the change of the flux equals to the potential difference, right? And uh, we have to emphasize the, the sign of the potential difference because we know Lenz's law set, there's a Lenz's law, um, tell us the direction of the current or the potential. It says the induced magnetic field, induced magnetic field oppose the change of initial magnetic flux. So that means oppose is the opposite direction. So in the equation, we need a negative sign in front of the voltage. So the negative sign is very important. So we should have a minus sign. And if we only need to consider the magnitude of the potential difference, then we don't need to include the negative sign. But actually, if we want to do the derivation, we need a negative sign. It's very important. Okay. So if the magnetic field is not uh, uniform, if the magnetic field is not uniform, that means if we have a surface and the magnetic field look like this. So the B is a function of X, Y, Z. Then we cannot write down the flux as B times A. We have to do the integration. So we rewrite the equation that will be the change of the magnetic flux, magnetic flux, right? This is the change of magnetic flux. I write this into an integral that will be the negative voltage. Okay, so um, this is um, um, very important theory um, because we know if we have a change on magnetic field, then we will induce the potential difference. But can we get the, uh, the electric field from this equation? We know if we have a constant electric field in the space and we want to know the potential difference from A to B, then we will get uh, the potential difference from A to B will be equal to the electric field times the distance. Okay. If the electric field is not uniform, for example, the electric field looks like this, and we still want to calculate the electric field from A to B, then we can use this equation to multiply the E by L because the E is not uniform, but we can do the integral and it will be the E times L. Right. So the, this equation could be replaced by the negative uh, integral of E times the L. And because we are doing this integral in a circle, so this is a closed line integral. So I use a circle on the integral. So the Friday's law could be rewritten in this formula right here. The change of magnetic flux okay, that will be equivalent to the V or equivalent to the integral of electric field times the L. So this is the second law of Maxwell's equation. We have change of magnetic field, then we will induce electric field. And the induced electric field will be a circle. So this is a magnetic field, then the induced electric field will be a circle either clockwise or counterclockwise. 
depends on the magnetic field increase or decrease. Okay, this is the second law. Third law of the electromagnetic field, and that will be Ampere's law. Okay. Ampere's law said if we have a current in the wire, then the current will generate magnetic field in a circle. Okay. This is the Ampere's law, and we will um, derive, we already have the equation, the magnetic field generated by the current around this wire will be the mu nun times I over 2 pi r. r is the distance from the point we want to calculate the magnetic field to the center of the wire. This is r. Okay. Then we can do the line integral of the magnetic field. Suppose we sketch a circle and we do the line integral of b times the circumference. This is a line integral of the circle. Right? Surrounding the circle, we have the uniform magnetic field because R is the same, so B is uniform, and times the circumference, this is line integral. This is equal to mu naung times I. Right? But if the Magnetic field is not uniform. The line integral couldn't write in this way. We have to do the integral. So that will be a circular integral magnetic field times dl. If the magnetic field is uniform, then this integral could be simplified by the b times 2 pi r. But if this is not a uniform or this is not a circle, then we have to do the integral in this way. So b times dl. Then this is equal to mu naught i. Okay, this is Ampere's law, and we have these equations and from the first lecture of the magnetic field, and I talk about this. But there is a problem. If there's no current, what will happen? Suppose we have a capacitor. We have two big plates. And these two plates are made by metal and connect with a battery. This battery um, has a change voltage. So the voltage of the battery change over time. So that means if um, we have electric field in between the two plates, Those are electric field. If the voltage of the battery is a function of time, then the electric field is also a function of time. Okay, this is easy to understand. And then let's see. If we do a line integral inside the plate, for example, I sketch a circle into the two plates, and we can use B times the DL, then we get mu naught I. But in this case, the I is equal to zero between the two plates because there's no current. There's just a change of electric field, but there's no current between the two plates. Currents are in the, in the wire. The currents are here. But we don't define the current between the two plates. So we don't know the current between two plates. So how can we use this formula um, to do the formulation. Here, we have the definition of the I. The current actually is the change rate of the charge. Right? If we have a cross, uh, cross section, then the charge on the plates, so suppose they are negative charge or the positive charge, there's a negative charge. And because of the current change over time, in the wire, so that means this charge flow through the wire was a function. So the charge on the plates is a function of time. 
So if the charge change over time, then we have the current. And we know, according to Gauss's law, the flux of the electric field is equal to the charge over the epsilon naught. So we can replace the charge by the Gauss's law. Okay? So we will have the current equal to the d dt, but the charge is replaced by the integral of the electrical field. So this is the current. So we plug this into the first equation, then we will have integral of uh, hold on, let me see. I miss the epsilon now. Right. So the integral of the B L, this is the line integral, that will be equal to mu non epsilon non change of electric flux. Okay, this is of course Ampere's law and um, into the plate. So we have two terms for the Ampere's law. If we are talking about the wire, then this integral will be equal to the mu non times the current. If there's no wire, no current, but we have two plates, then between the two plates, we have to write down the formula in this way. Actually, we can, if we have both, we have to plus, we have to add them, right? We add them. So, so uh, the final, uh, this final formula will be uh, mu naught i plus this two times the derivative of electric flux. So the first term give us the free current in the wire. And this give us the current, but this current is induced by the change of the charge. So this is into the plates. Okay, a, lo a lot of, of equation here. So I try to make it sim simple to understand. We have two terms. The first term is the current in the wire. The second term is the uh, uh, change of electric fields between two plates into the capacitor, right? So that means, so, yeah, any question? Yeah, I'm just wondering, like, could you describe a situation when we would have both pieces of the, of, you know, the right side of that equation be, like, relevant, you know? Um, like, I'm just having trouble imagining, like, having both the wire and, like, the electric field okay. being an issue. Um, so in the both case, you can think about uh, we are going to do an integral of a surface uh, includes both. So if I want to calculate the integral of the surface, the green surface, so you, you find that on the left part, we have change of electric field. And on the right side, we have the current. So if you do the integral of this green surface, then we have to consider both. But if we only have a current, then we need to use the first term. If we have uh, the change of electric field, we only need to consider the change of electric field. So it depends on how you draw the surface. Okay, yeah, I see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is Ampere's law. Um, this is the most difficult one in the Maxwell's equation. So the final one will be very easy, and it's called the flux of magnetic field through a closed surface. So we have closed surface, any surface, and we have magnetic field. So we want to know the flux of the magnetic field 
is equal to what? So actually, um, we have to think about um, the property of the electric field in the space. We have electric field generated by the charge. So if you look at the electric field, there is a source, right? The charge is a source. So that means if we do the integral of electrical field, this is not equal to zero if we have the surface include the charge. This will be equal to Q over epsilon now. But for the magnetic field, things are different. If we have a magnet, the magnet we have north pole, south pole, and it generates magnetic field from north pole to the south pole. It seems like oh, like this one. It seems like the north pole and the south pole are the source. But if you look inside the magnet, uh, the magnetic field starts from the south pole and move to the north pole. So that means the magnetic field curves are closed. So that means you cannot find the head or the tail. There's no source. For the magnetic field, they're always a circular. Something like this. And we have a magnet like this. So there's a north pole, there's a south pole. So the magnetic field are closed. So there's no source. So anytime, if we just draw a circle or any closed surface and to calculate the magnetic flux, you will find that the magnetic field will flow into the surface, then flow out. So how many flow in the flux flow into the surface is equal to how many flux flow out. So the in equal to out. So how, how much flux enter the surface equal to how much flux get out of the surface. So the net, surf, uh, net flux is equal to zero. Always, this is always true. So the reason is no source. You can find a source of, electric field, uh, of a magnetic field. So the difference between the electric field and the magnetic field are here. The electric field is a radiation, right? You have a charge and every curve is like a radiation. But the magnetic field, this is not a radiation. This is a circle. You have many circular uh, magnetic fields around the magnet. So the North Pole and the South Pole are over there and you cannot separate them. If you use a knife to cut, like this, to cut the, the magnet, after you separate them, the left side will find a South Pole and the left side will find a North Pole. So you will get two magnets. So we have the fourth law of the, uh, of the Maxwell's equation that will be the net flux of a closed surface is equal to zero. So let me give you a short summary. An electric field flux is not equal to zero, it's equal to Q the charge inside the surface over the epsilon norm, but the flux of the magnetic field is equal to zero. Okay, this is the difference. Okay, then all the theory have done and the next part will be the practice. So I have um, some problems from the mastering physics due yesterday and you will find that if we change electric field, we will get the magnetic field. If we change the magnetic field, we will get the electric field. 
So the first question will be, we have changed magnetic field. We have the change rate 0.4 Tesla over a second. Then we are going to calculate the electric field. Okay, there is a proton. The proton at point A, okay, so the point A, let me see, and we want to calculate the acceleration of the proton at point A. So the question is, why the proton has uh, acceleration? Why is the proton, proton accelerated? Okay. This is a question. So we know the, the proton has positive charge. So this is the positive charge. If we want to accelerate the charge, we need a force. So for a charge, the force will be the electric force. If there is an electric force, there should be electric field. But in the space, we only have a change in magnetic field. Why the, is there electric field? because the magnetic field change. The change of magnetic field will induce electric field. The change B induce E. This is called Friday's law or electromagnetic induction. So Friday's law tell us um, the flux of magnetic field change over time that will induce the potential difference. And the potential difference is equal to a line integral of electric field. Right? And the negative sign tell us the, the direction of induced electric field. We know in this circle, the magnetic field is uniform. So the left expression could be simplified as the change of time times the magnetic field times the area. Right. If we want to calculate the electric field at point A, then we only need to sketch um, a circle. This circle is, on, uh, the point A is on the circle. And this circle has the same center. The center is at point B. Here is the center. And point A is on the circle. Okay, then the radius is R. So the area here is equal to pi R squared. R is one centimeter. Okay, so we sketch a circle and the area will be this one. And that means we calculate the flux in this area. And this will be equal to the negative, the line integral of the electric field. The line integral, so what's the line integral? The path of the electric field will around the circle. Around the circle. So the line integral could be simplified as electric field times the circumference of the circle. That's 2 pi r. Right, so let's simplify this equation. We will have electric field equal to the change of magnetic field, then pi r squared over two pi r. Then the pi canceled and r canceled. So eventually we will have the change rate of magnetic field times r over two. Okay, this is uh, an electric field. And the electric field will give us a force. Force equal to the electric field times the charge. And the acceleration is equal to the force over the mass. So eventually, the acceleration will be equal to the charge over mass times electric field that will be the change rate of magnetic field times r over 2. r is the distance from a to the center of the circle. OK. 
Okay, so this is uh, acceleration. Then what's the direction of the acceleration? Um, let's uh, use the right hand row. We know the magnetic field decreased into the page. So we want to oppose this change. So we want to increase uh, the magnetic field. To increase the magnetic field, my thumb goes into the page and my four fingers goes clockwise. So at the point A, the electric field goes up. So like right here, the magnetic field decreases. So my thumb, my thumb point in into the page. So my four fingers clock uh, clockwise. Curl clockwise. So at point A, point A is here, the direction goes up. So it's a tangential direction, right? So if the uh, the electric field goes up, then the force should goes up because this is a positive charge. Then the acceleration goes up. Okay. So I think this is how we use uh, Maxwell's equation to solve the electric field. The same thing, if we want to calculate the magnetic field induced by the electric field, like this. Um, we have the Ampere's law, and we have a capacitor, and we know the uh, electric field is a function of time. Then we can use the same thing to calculate the uh, magnetic field. So we need to do more uh, practice and you will find um, the process to solve this problem is uh, similar, right? So one last question, and I think this will be very easy. And we are going to use the net flux of the magnetic field to calculate the, uh, the magnetic field. So here you will find there is a cube, and we know this cube has six surfaces, and each surface has different flux of magnetic field. We are going to calculate the magnetic flux on the front front face. Right? We know the total flux, the total flux of magnetic field is zero. So that means if we sum the six free, uh, six surface and the magnetic flux is going to equal to zero. So we have uh, six surface, then we use this sur six surface, that will be the surface flux, flux, flux. And the flux, the front surface, the back surface, and the left surface, the right surface, the top surface and the bottom surface, it's equal to zero. And we know the other six, uh, the other five surface, we have the flux, we just need to use the surface area times the magnetic field, then we could solve the flux of the front surface. Then we know the front surface the flux equal to the magnetic field times the area. Area is one centimeter square. Then we can go to solve the magnetic field. Okay, so this is uh, uh, what I'm going to talk today. The so next several minutes, let's take the quiz. The quiz is um, a little bit easy, so we can spend 10 minutes to finish this one. 